Well, hey, and welcome, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you today. This is your virtual financial Team Prosperity Wednesday training, and I'm super excited to be here with my husband, Mike Amos, and I appreciate everybody's time. Um, I know how valuable it is, and I'm glad that you're here, and I also appreciate all the people that take the time to listen to the recording when they can. Um, so what I wanted to go over today, um, me and Mike did speak last night for the entire company, um, and there was a few things that um, are going to be a little bit of a repeat in my presentation because they're just really, really important, um, and then, of course, a few new things as well. And um, July 22nd, 2020, it is just such a great time right now. Um, I love this picture right here because I really feel like the world is ours, like this is our time right now. So um, things are really, really exploding. Um, in the last four or five weeks, we've had a lot of recognition. Um, Ron Harris hit the 10 Club, which is amazing. Um, he's really, really blowing it up, and you're going to see, you know, a lot more information about him as, you know, as we go. Um, if you're interested in what the 10 Club is and how to get there, um, if you go into your CRM and on the top there you hit that blue virtual financial circle, um, under the main menu, under News and Leaders, there's the CEO Club, and there's like the 10, 25, 50, 7,500, 200, 300, 400, 500 Club for total team. Um, and then the Big 10, which is 10 in a month, and the Elite 25, which is 25 in a month. And I remember at one point, my goal was to get mine and Mike's face in every single one of these. And so um, that's always pretty cool, and I can't wait to see everybody else's faces there as well. Um, we've had a few promotions to marketing director, which is really, really exciting because the next step is the big promotion senior marketing director, SMD. Um, the first was Vikas Sharma. You know, he's building the business with his lovely wife, Sonali. Um, so we're really excited about them. Um, and then Terry Turner. Terry's been with us for a while, and um, she's just awesome. I mean, I I love to be able to pick the people that I work with um, and really help them, you know, build something special. So um, couldn't say enough great things about Terry. Um, and then Cindy Sadler Moon. I mean, they're just blowing it up. Her and her husband Reggie and son Joey and brother Brian. I mean, they're they're starting to just you know really build something special, and I just can't wait to see. Um, just the amazing stuff that they continue to build, and um, you're definitely going to be hearing a lot more about their organization as it builds. Um, so really, really exciting stuff. Uh, we've had some virtual financial coin qualifiers, and you can qualify for a coin if you have two personal direct recruits or two sales or a combination of both in a month. Uh, David Chase in California. Ron Harris has qualified this month and last month. Um, Roy Smith, who's on Ron's team, Vikas, Sharma, and um, Michael Eisbrenner, and Cindy Moon. So really, really excited. Four of them have already gotten their coins by mail. The other two should be going out here in the next few business days. So um, just we'll keep an eye out to make sure that those did get received. Um, and there's always, like, super exciting news going on. Um, just got this yesterday from Transamerica. They're making their underwriting even faster. Um, there has been some delays, but really I haven't really noticed too much. I mean, we still have non-med policies going through, you know, two to ten days. I just had a big one approved yesterday that was in underwriting for, for like a week. You know, so if it's going to be even faster than that, that's amazing. I can't wait. Um, there's always big news coming uh, by the 24th, which is the day after tomorrow. There should be some big news from Transamerica about some additional offerings uh, for new and existing policies. Um, I know they've been super excited about this announcement, so I can't wait to get all the details. And as soon as I have them, I will share them, of course. Um, this was an article that was published yesterday. I thought this was really interesting. Um, and this might not be for everybody because not everybody's interested in doing the financial consulting or being a financial professional. Um, but this talks about the 401k plans no longer make much sense for savers. And I've got the reference right here. It was written by Aaron Brown from Bloomberg News. Um, and they were talking about, you know, what the 401k used to be 30 years ago where – on average, they had a return of 9.2%, and now, today, they're looking at 0.6%, and 
and it's way less than the fees that people are paying, which is 1% to 2%. Um, also, they used to have tax incentives. They used to have a two and a half annual advantage over, you know, other investments, and now there's no tax advantage. So it's things have changed a lot, and this is why what we do is so incredibly important, right? We teach people about the six pillars of financial literacy and financial planning, and there's actually seven. You know, the first one starts with reading the book and having the literacy. Um, and understanding the other three, right, I mean, the other six, the cash flow, debt management, having an emergency fund, proper protection, asset accumulation, and estate preservation. This is what our financial professionals teach on the financial needs analysis. So don't forget how important it is, you know, what it is that we do for people and what we do for families, especially right now in a difficult time. Um, it's, it's even more so important. And of course, you don't have to wear every hat. You don't have to ever be a financial professional if you don't want to. Um, so we're just in a really, really, really great spot. Um, so let us help you. You know, that's really the bottom line. Um, and it wouldn't be a training before August 1st if I didn't mention e &O. I absolutely have to because it's changing. I want to make sure that everybody is set up. So where before it was $25.45, which is 70 and you got the whole $70 rebate, now it's still 25 plus 130 a quarter, and you still get the $70 rebate. So you're actually making an extra five bucks. It actually is cheaper, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's real easy to enroll. And as a builder, ENO and platform fees don't roll, especially from March. So it's, it's really, really important. And it's, um, it's one less thing that WFG has to administer, which means that there's more time to help us with licensing appointments and, and little things, little admin things that, that need to be done. So this is great. This is going to untie up a bunch of staff, and it's going to improve all the other things that we do. So everybody should enroll by the end of this month. It's real, real easy. Um, you go there, you verify, you review, you pay, you print. Um, pretty straightforward. This talks about the rebate. It's still the same, you know, have a 60% or higher retention, which is a given. I mean, your retention should not be 60%. As a company, I think we're at 87% retention. I think mine and Mike's retention is in the 90s, you know, where 9 out of 10 policies are staying on the books, if not more. So 60% should be a given. You know, this shouldn't be even something that you worry about. But, yeah, 2,000 annualized points a month, 4,000 annualized points every two months, or 6,000 annualized points points a quarter, you'll get that full reimbursement of 70 a month. So while you're in there, you know, make sure you're checking your WFG alerts regularly and make sure that you set yourself up for um, Legacy Shield. If you're paying for E&O and platform fees, this is free. It's included and it's a great value. So, um, so have patience, right? All things are difficult before they become easy. And you have to think positive. Um, it's easy to get like in a negative downward spir spiral or get you know lost on social media, but you have to really just keep yourself positive. Think about you know is am I benefiting my business? Am I growing? You know how is this going to improve my situation? So think positive. Give your efforts time to compound and have as many people as possible eyes on your assets. So you just want to spread the word about the business and about the solutions that we offer up to as many people as possible and give your efforts time to compound. I think that's really kind of the magic formula. Um, and then, of course, we're all a little bit crazy. I love this quote. Absolutely one of my favorite quotes because um, I, I think of myself as one of the crazy ones, you know, and my parents were crazy, you know, and crazy entrepreneurs, and, and I'm continuing that, you know, and, and I love what we do, and I love the crazy people on the call. Um, so we're all, we're all a little bit crazy, I guess. So here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and the square holes, the ones who see things differently. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius because the ones that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. And absolutely true. And the biggest way to change the world is to build a big team. Because as an individual, how many, how many people can you really help in a day? Maybe a few. But what if you can help a few thousand or a few hundred thousand, right? Um, that's what really drives me is how many people can we help? And the way that we do that is by building a huge team. 
So if you want to go fast, go alone, right? If you want to go far, you need a team. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't agree more. Um, and, um, and it's a great feeling to build great relationships with great people. So um, work smart on your smartphone, right? You can build this business part-time or full-time, and every single thing we have you can do on your cell phone. So every single platform, your, your WFG, your virtual financial, your Wealthwave, your CRM, any of your tools, virtual environment, you can get into all that stuff on your cell phone. I think you can even get into this meeting on your cell phone if you wanted to. just have to download the app and then go back through it. So um, pretty exciting what we have. Um, whether you're doing it full-time or part-time, you're still eligible for the trips and the, the bonuses and the quarterly bonuses. For the, for the monthly and the quarterly bonuses, you have to be at SMB or, and higher, and that's one of the big reasons why we're trying to get you all there. Um, that is the big promotion, you know. So, um, and that's that really should be your first goal if you're not there yet. So, um, and I love this slide. You know, of course, we want to focus and not get distracted, but I feel like we're, like, breaking the status quo. And we can see right now, like, how far society's advice has gotten everybody that, you know, has – gone to school and worked at a job forever, and now they're scrambling. And I really feel like we have the answer, right? Because going to school, learning only while in school, getting a job, working to pay off debt, working 40 hours a week forever, trading time for money, you know, having two weeks to vacation to escape every year if you're lucky, right? Being stuck to a schedule, reporting to a boss, making them rich, right? They get married, have kids, retire at 65, possibly, than enjoy life. I mean, you see more and more 65, 70-year-olds going back to work, you know, work uh, versus being like the CEO of your own life, of your own business, and being in control. And this is what I talked about a little bit last night. Like, for me, it's all about the freedom, right? The freedom to build from anywhere, to live anywhere. I always joke that if I could get good enough internet reception, I can build this business from the moon. And it's true, right? CEO's advice. You could... Go to school if you want to. Be a lifelong learner, right? That's important. Start a business. Build multiple flows of income. Work 80 hours a week for a few years. It's funny, Lori Grainer said the same thing from Shark Tank. Um, make money work for you. Travel whenever you want. Set your own schedule. Work for yourself. Make you rich, right? Date a boss, marry a boss, and have boss kids. Be free your entire life. So that's what it's all about. And we spread that knowledge, right, and we bring value to others with the business, with the products, with solutions. Um, and lastly, um, I did want to say that, look, we're so ahead of the game. For the first time ever, WFG is actually having a virtual convention. I've never been to one of their conventions, but it's kind of interesting how far ahead of everybody we are. So let's do it, right? Let's make it happen. There's only now, um, and uh, we're definitely at the right place at the right time. So give me just one second. Let me grab Mike. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. When I logged into the virtual environment today and decided to use the networking lounge, which you guys are looking at right now, uh, some of these environments will pull up some previous comments and they may look old and outdated. I know Brian on this meeting, he had a comment. I wanted to make sure you guys understand how we use the environment. So from a company standpoint, logging into like the Tuesday, Saturday meeting, virtual environment is great. When I use it on a team level or I use it on an individual level, I'll log in through the virtual environment, but then I have my own, you know, screen share system. I use free conference call. So if I'm running a meeting, you guys are logging in and you're seeing this, but we're not actually going through the virtual environment. That way I can see who's in here, the comments and the chats are controlled through, you know, what we're doing. Um, and so this is used quite often. We're using it today. Um, it's just used in different ways. And so, for example, if I was going to do maybe a master class on how money works, you've got a bunch of different things that you can choose. So you can send, you know, you can have the executive boardroom pulled up. You can have the VF boardroom pulled up. So any of this stuff in the lounges of the boardrooms, you can use and as people log in through whatever, you know, um, screen share system you're using, they'll be in here. So I just wanted to let you guys know how we actually use that. And then 
like I said, going over to the network lounge, some of this pulls up a public chat. Just because this stuff is aged doesn't mean that this isn't used. So you're free to use whatever you want in this entire system, um, but the more control over how people interact through your screen share system, uh, the better. So let's talk about some stuff that will help you guys with your business. And throughout first half of this year, it's been a little bit crazy, but just stay dialed in. Remember, discipline equals dollars. And when you're out there talking to people, realize you're not pushing people in a certain direction. You're just inviting people to take a look at what you're doing because on the mission side, what we're doing in the marketplace, how we're approaching the marketplace should be pretty comfortable for you. One of the things that you have to understand for yourself as well as others, you've got to know the difference between interested and committed because that's a big deal. Somebody can be interested in what you're doing, but they have to have the commitment. If you're going to put time, energy, resources um, behind somebody, you need to get a return on that investment. And that's what we were talking about last night in the company meeting. Make sure people are worthy of your time investment. There are a lot of people right now on the move. There's a great migration of people and money, and we've been really hammering this home for the last few months because this trend will continue. So if you know that on a macro level this is happening, open conversations. People are looking for solutions, and that's what we're always drilling is that we've got solutions in the marketplace to problems that potential partners or clients have. And that all comes back to just being able to just talk to people, find out what's going on, ask questions, show interest. One of the things that we believe in is leverage, and we believe that going forward, wages will not be able to keep pace, much less allow somebody to get ahead. Cannot trade your time for money in this economy going forward. So what we teach is control on the client and partner side. On the partner side, one of the ways we take control is through leverage. That's the ability to influence a system or environment in a way that multiplies the outcomes of one's effort without the increase in the resources, the capital expenditures, the infrastructure, et cetera. So we create a great amount of leverage here, and that's one of our advantages in a system. One of the things that's new and one of the things that we always try to do that's not new is engagement. And when you're on a platform like LinkedIn, you can now run polls, and it can be as easy as just saying, hey, you know, what do you wake up to? What's the first thing you check? Everything can't be a sales pitch, a product pitch, a company pitch. It's going to get watered down. What needs to be peppered in is advertisements, but mostly you're looking for engagement. You're educating, you're entertaining, you're you know, just getting the normal things that you need to do, which is in the middle of build and sell, which is engage. Remember, you can't build and then sell. You've got to build, engage, and sell. Even though this may not look like much, it will help with that when you're thinking about things on a daily basis. How can I get in front of my audience and get engagement? We've been talking about the 12-week year. We just finished up week six, and we've talked about, yes, the vision, the goals, and the tactics. We've talked about making sure you have enough marketing legs so your business survives. And this past week, we talked about, you know, what do you do? And, yes, we've been really talking about how money works, E to E, employee to entrepreneur, but you cannot neglect the digital, the technological, the innovation that we bring to the marketplace. So, um, yes, the missions are important, but never forget – what you're doing on the backside, which is massive disruption. Uh, last week, we went through the team meeting. A uh, few things included was the release of the team channels. If you have Wealthwave 360, you can just plug in our channel. It's got some emails, got some documents that are pertinent to your business. Uh, if you need that channel uh, link to upload, just let us know. And you, like I said, all of our meetings, always on YouTube, always in the Facebook group, et cetera. If you're not participating in the 90 or in the 12-week year, go on a 90-day cycle. That's essentially what the 12-week year is. It's breaking it down by quarter, and through those quarters, you're going to have, uh, if you do it correctly, you're going to meet goals that over time will eclipse those goals people are meeting on an annual basis. So if you're not following along uh, in the 12-week year, just build yourself a 90-day cycle. And within those 90 days, just know that each and every day, when you go to war, building your business, you know, one hour at a time, think about a boxing match. Boxers go around, take a little break, do another round. Same thing here. If you have a great round, which I consider a round about an hour, build on it. You know, the momentum will carry you into the next hour. Kind of reward yourself a little bit. Um, however, if you have a terrible hour, kind of reset. But in that hour of actually going at it, attention, focus, energy, intensity, execution, and it just helps you get through the day, 
uh, you know, not string together many, many hours sitting in an office chair on the phone or online because what that's going to do is it's going to hurt the attention, focus, energy, intensity, and execution. So 90-day cycles, but within every day, break it down. We put a poll on our Facebook group. What I'm trying to figure out is what are you guys doing? Um, and if you have, you know, I'll, I'll make this an announcement, but if you guys can go in there and just log in what you're actually doing, because then we want to talk about, okay, you know, if people are doing this, are they actually getting results? Because some of the stuff I do gets me results. Some of the stuff do, I do uh, gets me no results. And we need to talk about that because if I'm doing something and I'm getting no results, somebody else on our team is doing that platform and getting results, we want to talk about it. We want to share information. So we want to make sure that if you guys are doing things, that we help you along the process and the way to actually produce lead generation from your marketing efforts. One of the things we've been testing out lately is just some data on the front end. Now, remember, data is not for the Wealthwave 360 system, but if you're running email marketing campaigns to try to find interested parties in uh, potential business, uh, some of the client services you offer, whatever it might be, uh, one of the things we talked about is you can't have a high bounce rate. And what I've been doing lately, you've got two things you can do. You can scrub that data. That's going to cost you money. Or what I've been doing as a test over the last few days is just extracting just the Gmails, leaving everything else in the sheet, just extracting the Gmails. And what I'm finding is that it's close to 100%. So if you guys are out there, you know, getting lists of potential business opportunity leads, um, product uh, client leads, and you're um, struggling with the conversion rate on the email, then, you know, just start with just the Gmails. Also, you can do some stuff, and I've tried this over the past few months, and it works. I've tried the exact same message with and without emojis. And I know it's, it's dumb, but emojis increase the open rate. They, attend, they grab the attention of the subscribers. They increase the open rate. They increase brand awareness. So um, just you know, try to test things, even though it may seem small and insignificant in your mind, but makes a difference on the back end in upticks and percentages of conversion, open, um, attention, all of these things. Definitely worth it. A couple of things we're going to do. Uh, we're going to make some changes to the way that we report this. So this daily activity sheet, if you're brand new, this is something that we've made that you can kind of follow along that should set you up because if the activity is here, it should streamline down into the tier results. Now, the tiers are going to be no. We're going to know if you have zero results or a lot of results. What we don't know is what you're doing. So for yourself and for us to help you, if you keep track of this, um, we're changing a little bit. We used to email them in Sundays. I think what we're going to do is we're going to start, like, a message thread on the Facebook group. That way you guys can interact with each other, talk about the week, be open. Instead of just getting feedback from me, you can get an open form feedback, and I think that will help hopefully other people kind of see what we're doing, draw them in, but also other people who aren't participating. Maybe they're struggling with something that comes up in that message feed where we offer an answer to that will help them. One of the other things that we want to make sure that we do is get our partners money. There's nothing worse than having a new partner come in and not make money because the excitement starts to dwindle, right? It starts to drift. It starts to fade away, and then we start to lose that person. You know, we can't go out and have the activity for them. If they're willing to do the Tier 1 contact and confirm, there's a lot that we can do on the back end. But one of the things that we can do on the front end as a new partner for individual income and organizational growth is just learning that when you're talking to people, you know, do they pay out of pocket for term life insurance? If yes, they may qualify for a very important upgrade. And that should be exciting, not, hey, you might qualify for an upgrade. Hey, man, you could qualify for a very important upgrade. I'm really excited. Build the excitement. Insurance itself is not, excite, uh, and it's not an exciting product offer, but um, when you can bring the excitement in your voice, your inflection, you can help pick that up. If they say, no, you still got the opportunity to go in about living benefits, there are millions of policies that need to be upgraded over the next, I don't know, seven to ten years. Um, those are easy sales. It's reallocation of funds to a better vehicle. Normally what we see is if we get in the habit of asking this enough every month, we get three to five easy sales, and that can start to get continuous income for your partners, which builds that ability to go out there and have X amount of income coming in month after month after month, and the building income will – you can't just go from zero to all of this building income on a managerial or expansion level. There's got to be some active linear income in the beginning, 
It's a great way to do it. It's not a hard question to ask. Um, it's a very easy way to continue and direct the conversation. One of the things I also do is if I'm at my home office or I'm set up, you know, working and I'm talking to people, I've got my Transamerica uh, Transwear set up, a screen already open, because what I don't want to do is if I've got the opportunity to make a transaction there, I don't want to prolong it. I don't want to set up so many cycles of communication where they have the opportunity to break at some point. So if somebody's on talking to somebody, whether it's an intro call, a specific client call, you know, I'm on here and this, you know, no matter what you pick for the term, it's going to give you all the available options according to that. So, you know, what's the product? And I just need very basic information. What's their age? What state are they in? What's their gender? Approximate risk class. Face them out. Once again, if I'm comparing a traditional term to a possible living benefit, I want to compare apples for apples. So in terms of the face value. So the face value right there, then all you've got to do is there's two options. There's a summary option and an illustration option. Summary is the price quote. Hit that, and I'm right there. And I can compare, see what's available, uh, and talk to them about that. Now, if this makes sense as a possible upgrade, we want to get to that application as soon as possible. Yeah, we can hop on a screen share and do the illustration, but I don't need to go from a conversation where I've identified this person might be a potential upgrade to me saying, hey, let me do some research for you, follow up, get back with them, then give them the quote, follow up again, do the illustration. All you're doing is when you're prolonging the cycle of communication, you're offering more breaks and no shows in one of those. So go from point A to point B, which is the contact, the revenue, and income, if it's an easy sale, as quickly as possible. Because, like I said, you don't want to be in that situation where it's just a lot of follow-up, like a dog chasing its tail. Um, your time is important. We always talk about that. It's got to be invested in something. On the client side, if it's an easy transaction, don't make it hard, and don't let the client make it hard. The reason that we want to do this and do this on an individual as well as an organizational basis is because there's a lot of money to be made in this upgrade market. You can build multiple offices that concentrate on one product, and those could be multi-million dollar distribution legs and offices for you. So we don't want to neglect, okay, this is an easy um, insurance policy to understand, the term and living benefits. Transamerica has all three embedded into that. And then you've got an opportunity where people didn't know about that or it wasn't available five, six years ago when they bought their policies. We are solving a problem and we're serving a need. And when you talk about and you look, you know, in any times, whether it's great economic times or miserable economic times, those people out there solving problems, those are making the money. Remember, in the Great Depression, lots and lots and lots of millionaires were minted because we had cheap infrastructure and we had the ability for little to no barrier to entry. Okay, so on the two missions, you know, this is important that you understand how to tell people what you do in a clear, concise way. Yes, the digital aspect has to be intertwined in here. We essentially do two things. We teach people how money works, and we provide and help make the bridge, make the move, E to E, employee to entrepreneur. Pretty simple. Inside that whole mission, you've got infrastructure, you've got partners, and you need to understand how we all work together. So WealthWave, kind of like the front end, some of our marketing content, some of our look online, and a couple of our missions. Virtual is the innovation, the disruption, the technological aspect and company that's bringing the uh, – our unlocking new market value with what we do, and that's really where the wealth creation comes in our model. And then we've got to have somebody to absorb it, the largest IMO in the country. We'll do that in an orderly way because if you have an exponential growth model here and you hit that viral growth, you have nothing to absorb it, all this that you did setting this up is wasted. So – Understand how the partners come together. And like I said, in the middle, understand what virtual financial does. This is, you know, who we are. This is the future of the agency building model, and this is when innovation creates growth. So, yes, the front side and the back side, WealthWave and WFG is important, but us in the middle, this is what's going to create the wealth for you. This is what's going to set up that portfolio of digital agencies. So this right here is who we are. And we do this, and we've set all this up so that we can create massive distribution with the largest industries in the world with a system. So you no longer have to, if you have an office, you know, over here and an office over here, they're doing the exact same thing. If they're not, the problem, and we can correct that, but essentially 
You go to McDonald's in Florida, you go to McDonald's in California, it might be a little bit different. You're expecting the same thing. You know what you're getting. Same thing with virtual financial. In each office, we're doing the same thing. We know what we're getting. That's going to help create independence from you um, and create an exit strategy for you. The roles also are a major part of what virtual financial does as far as the innovation. One of the biggest reasons why there's such a high failure rate in this industry is because this person right here who knows very little to nothing after they pass their test is expected to basically do all of this. You can't go out and talk about moving money, setting up retirement if you're brand new. So what we're allowed to do is if you don't feel comfortable doing that role, lack the skill set to do that role, or just plain don't want to do it, you can pass that off. And what that does is it increases the success rate in the industry based on being able to gravitate towards what we want to specialize in. Where this person and this person, when they work together well, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Managers are just making sure everybody's happy. So let's talk about putting all this together. So you've got your missions, you understand your partners, your infrastructure, all this stuff that you have, um, and you've got everything in place, but now it's just you. So you've gone through training, you're putting all this together, you know, what are you supposed to do? In the beginning, it's very, very limited. And we do that so that you're not overwhelmed by the entirety of the process of building this out. In the beginning, you just have to learn how to open some basic conversations, get some videos out, and we'll do the rest for you through that process. You're going to come up with ideas. You're going to recruit people. Um, you're going to learn from your failures as well as your successes. You're going to start to put things together. And when you do, that time investment is more effective. And then you start to develop other marketing legs, teach other people how to do this. So, yes, it starts with you, and it might feel like you're alone for a period of time. It might bring in a few people that do absolutely nothing. But just know there's more people like you, like us, out there. You just have to learn how to identify them. Take the emotion out of building this. Don't get emotional about how things go. Build your business with a solid foundation by the numbers. Understand what you need to do. Understand what you need to surround yourself with, and understand – you know, how you need to organize your business, personal income, agency income, expansion income, bonus income. How are you going to get to some of these later incomes? And then on the front end, how are you going to survive that survival period? That comes from some active income. You can't make zero income on an active side starting a business and expect the managerial overrides to come in over a 30, 60-day basis. The progression of building all of that stuff will fall in place. But what's going to frustrate you the most is not making money on the front side. We'll help you, but you've got to open those conversations. So when you look at predicting and looking at your income, this is what you count on first, personal income. What can I count on myself for in terms of going out and trying to open client conversations that I can pass off if I'm not a financial professional or partner conversations that I can pass off to my manager for interviews, training, support, et cetera. And through that process, I'm going to build an agency, I'm going to have some expansion, and I'm going to hit bonus. So you can't just drift along saying, oh, whatever comes my way, comes my way. What am I going to earn this month? What am I counting on, and how am I going to get there? And like I said, it all starts with the inviter role. All you have to do is master that role, and we will actually help build you a business. Partners, clients, you just got to feel confident that with some type of a script, you can go out there, open, continue, direct conversation over – and pass it off on the assembly line. If we can't invite, if we can't open conversations, the rest of all the help that you have on this platform means absolutely nothing. And one of the ways, you know, we talk about the three, warm market, cold market, social media, but the common market for a new partner opens it up even more. So if I went to school, if I had previous employment, civic groups, whatever it might be, I can find those people online, and that loose commonality, that bridge of association We'll buy us a little bit of time, and then we, you know, with that time that we do buy, we introduce one of our missions, mostly, you know, how money works, because people will get behind that. It's well-received, and they'll give you the opportunity. What the common market does is give you an entry point. What the mission does is give you a little bit more of their attention, a little bit more of their time to see where this could possibly go. And remember, the tier one on the invitation part leads to some video information or additional information that leads to the confirm. If it's a potential partner opportunity, the ABC is important because we can filter people out. We can start bringing the right people in. And then the ones that don't 
you know, fit into what we're looking for for a variable reason that makes sense, we pivot over to client side. So an ABC could be a partner, could be a client, can be neither. But if you have enough of these and we say 20 a month, then your business really starts to move and you really start to grow in multiple directions. This is what's going to happen. Remember, we saw the picture of just you, kind of everything coming out of training. Now you're going to start to put this together. You might hire your first 10. It's going to be a learning experience. Through that process, a few of them start to stick. You guys start to form relationships. You guys start to form that initial home office or base shop. Then from this process, you're naturally going to have people that are ready to do this independently. And that's your job. You have to develop yourself, first of all. But really, if you're looking at a compressed time period, and I think going forward, you know, over a six, nine, 12 month process, these numbers will start getting bigger. But really, what you want to work on is a trio of people at a time, trio of people that you can put time, energy, resources in that you think is going to become a successful senior vice president. Because from this process, you find good leadership. And good leadership, you know, when you find that, you're very thankful to have that, and you nurture it, and you take care of it, and to the point, they don't need you. Yes, you guys have a business relationship, probably a personal relationship, but you've done what you need to do on the front side to create that independent office, and this is what it looks like. You've got your office, and then things start to sprout up all over the place, and with a system, with an assembly line, with good management and good leadership, all of this will be very orderly, and everybody will be doing the same thing, and the distribution will start to build up from this. And before you know it, you know, those six legs deep that we go, six offices deep on the expansion or build out, that really starts to add up to some significant passive income. And this is what happens on the bonus schedule. Bonuses start at SVP, but once again, with our digital model, once we start clicking, we're going to own the bonus platform because S SVP, CEO, EMD, it's just going to be an explosion. Once these start to roll, it's not going to stop. There's no re point of resistance for scalability for our business other than the human element that we put in. Once we hit this, we really start to explode. Remember, it's going to come from the development of people. When I was a little kid, the Atlanta Braves you know, were on TV. My dad used to watch them. They were terrible. But... Ten years later, from 1985 to 1995, they were world champions. So how did they do that? Well, they built it through a farm system. By being so terrible, they had high draft picks, and they you know, built a farm system that you know, um, developed one of the greatest pitching staffs of all time and won a national championship. Same thing here. You look at what you're doing as like a minor league farm system. You're bringing people in, and through that process, you're going to have some people come through that process and do what you need them to do to go out and build offices. You know, it's not going to be overnight, but if you put the time, energy, effort into this and select the right people and work with them, um, you're going to have something that never stops growing. And my main filter is the cash flow quadrant. If you're an employee or you're self-employed and you own a job and you want to remain there, you're happy, great. Um, nice to know you. Maybe there's some client services I can help you out with, but I'm not trying to convince you to come over to this side. If you're already on this side or you're looking to make a bridge, let, let's talk. But also outside of this cash flow quadrant, which is an immediate leading indicator for me, I also look at the personality uh, quadrant as well because you've got to pick out the right people. These people are always right. Well, if they already know everything, how are you going to teach them anything? You can't. It's impossible to work with those people. C is comfortable. Those people are, you know, in the comfort zone. They like staying there. They like kind of receding into that back corner. Um, they're okay with where they are. They don't want to step outside of the comfort zone. You know, a big part of what we do is trying new things, developing new skill sets, stepping outside the comfort zone. That's not going to work. This person right here has to be liked. And remember, if you're going to put things online, um, you know, we stay away from politics and religion for the most part, but you're going to put some things online that not everybody agree with. If you have to be liked by everybody online or you have to be liked by everybody that you talk to on the phone, that's a problematic leading indicator. That's a personality defect. This business is not going to work for them. Finally, as a person who wins, that's a person who either has had success, currently is successful, um, or is still looking for that success. But they just come out, and you can tell either directly or indirectly they want to win. We are looking for people that want to win and win on a big scale. So understand cash flow quadrant, personality quadrant, these are all filters. You're looking for the right person.
Whatever you're doing, just keep moving forward. Don't stop. You know, whatever team you've got on the field right now, continue to move the ball down the field with that particular team, but don't stop for anything. Because there's, if you set this up correctly, initially, just movement. That's all we're looking for, activity. That's the key to learning this business. Now, from that movement activity, you start to get repetition. And remember, repetition is the key to mastery. So if I'm doing this stuff day in, day out, eventually I'm going to feel comfortable on the phone talking with whoever, you know, all of those butterflies have left, and I feel confident that I'm going to go in and be able to direct and continue that conversation based on what I've done in the past, which is this over and over and over again. And then finally what that does is creates velocity. Once we have the movement and the learning, and then once we start to repeat that over and over again and master it, that, that creates velocity in client growth, partner growth, organizational growth, and then you're able, because you've been down that path, to teach other people the exact roadmap of how to get there. You also need to learn how to use social media. This is the convergence of a multi-trillion dollar industry with social media. Uh, you know, a lot of myself, you know, we constantly get clients, partners off LinkedIn. Um, you guys, you can do this, but you can't give up, and you can't be one of those per- people who throws something out if it gets no reaction or a negative reaction, throws your hands up. A lot of the stuff I did early on, I would laugh at now. It's a growing process. It's, it's a growth development process. And when you understand what you're doing in terms of what's working and what's not working, you throw fuel on what's working and you stomp out what's not working. One of the easiest ways is to learn what we put in place and then go out and find out other people who are really killing it on social media and mimic what they're doing. You've got the power of associated and brand excellence. So when you're out there, you're not trying to, you know, prove your brand. How money works, wealth wave, virtual, all these things is significant in brand excellence. So you're not out there as an independent person on an island by yourself trying to build a brand. You've got a lot of things that instantly you can plug into. You know, this was disrupted by the whole COVID. It will continue in 2021, I'm sure. But the book the articles, the media that are in your back of your Wealthway 360 system, that does what, you know, is impossible almost for a single person to do, which is this bottom right here. If you're trying to build rapport, trust, and credibility, and you've got all these things that are seen on national media stages, they're seen online, and you can introduce yourself through those types um, of articles and videos that you're associated with this, you can do this right here. The rest of this is just, once again, just learning how to repeat the process. Letting people talk, getting information, uncovers a problem. You're going to possibly have a solution for, leads to an action step. You can never get the action without the solution. Never get the solution without the problem. You can never get the problem without the information. And this will make people comfortable enough to start talking. Use what you have to your advantages. Those master classes in there, the How Money Works master class in the Wealthwave 360 system, has the notes already for it. The other ones in uh, Wealthwave and a couple other ones, the E to E, will have notes coming with it. You guys need to learn how to be comfortable online. We're not asking you to con- you know, construct a webinar from scratch. We're asking you to go in and learn some of these and go online. Now, first time, invite some friends and family. Say, hey, this is what I'm doing for the first time. I like a little support. You're not pitching anything there. You're just teaching them through a webinar about how money works, E to E, whatever it might be. Um, now, if you don't have friends and family show up for the first couple, you may show up and you may find out that you're the only person there. It's, uh, it's tough to start out doing these things. It's going to take a little bruise to your ego probably. That's why I invite some people that you know. Be honest with them. Hey, I'm starting this webinar series. I would appreciate you know, your participation. I'm not sure who's going to show up. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Um, and then build there. Remember, you can't get to 1,000 people on a webinar without getting 10 people on a webinar. You can't get 10 people on a webinar without getting your first. So understand everything that we do and everything that we do is a process. You're going to have to learn, grow, and develop. But if you refuse to do that, you're going to get left behind by the people who are willing to, once again, step outside their comfort zone. And then just master presenting your presentation. Remember, if you're talking about organic leads or you're talking about paid leads, really it boils down to how well you can do the last step, which is the presentation, whether it's controlling that phone call, whether it's handling that webinar, whether it's doing the client F&A, whatever it might be, you need to get better at this because the last step is usually the decision-making process. If you've done a poor job here, a lot of the decision-making process on the other side, partner, client, 
is going to be a negative. People run out of money. People fear money. This is some things that we can't come out. You wouldn't go into a place with a lot of overweight people and tell them how fat they were. So you can't go out and tell people how broke they are. You've got to kind of switch it and sell it in a way that, hey, it doesn't have to continue like this. Simple decisions that you start to make today based on some education and some literacy can start to turn things around. Remember, there's a fork in the road. If we continue to do what we've always done, yeah, we're going to get that result. How does that result look 20, 30 years now? Um, on the other side, if we take an alternate route and we start to put things in place, how does that possibly look? Remember, you want to paint a picture where it's the best outcome and the worst possible outcome based on the decision-making process. Just learn, practice, improve. Everything you're doing, the tier one, tier two, three, four, five, six, marketing, everything you do, you should get better at. If you're not getting better at it, there's a problem because when you get better at something, the results should follow. And once again, the results aren't following, then that's a problem. That's where some of the stuff that you could participate in, like the daily activity sheet, really helps us kind of alleviate those blockages when we see them. Remember also, you're not, you know, working for a company that manufactures what you distribute. You're not working as an independent agent. You know, we work for the client. And quite frankly, on the partner side, we work for the partner side too. So you need to understand that, hey, I'm not selling a particular type of product. What I'm selling is hope and opportunity. You know, what we have is missions, how money works, financial literacy, E to E. But essentially, we work for the client on the partner side. And that's important, especially on the client side when they understand you're a broker. You're not trying to fit them into something that you have. You're trying to make sure that you get everything in terms of the information, provide a solution and a product for. Also understand when you're out there talking to people, can't classify every, that, everybody and lump them into the same groups. Boomers, Gen X, and Gen Y, millennials, they have different views of the world. They have different problems they're facing. So understand that when you're building personas, understand who you're talking to, and understand when you're going after people, you can't be everything to everybody. So you've got to start picking some people out. And when you do that and you're starting to build that persona, think about people that will probably need your help the most. On the client side, what I find is that the employee – they have structured programs for the most part. They have, you know, 401K they're contributing to for the most part. That contractor, that self-employed, that small business owner typically has a lot of needs, and typically if the business is going well, they have cash to put to work. Remember, the gig economy, first of all, if somebody's not in a, you know, a part-time business, well, that's one of the best tax deductions there is, you know, in the IRS code today. So first and foremost, just some basic understanding about, you know, how the tax code works, and the fact that there's a lot of people involved in the gig economy. Once again, just learning how to open conversations, ask questions, let people talk about themselves will unveil this information. 70% of small businesses are owned and operated by a single person. That person's wearing all the hats. Do you think their financial plan is being neglected? Yeah, probably so. They're overwhelmed, especially right now. Now, businesses might be facing a hard time right now, but in the normal course of day-to-day um, -day activity in normal times, they've got a lot they're thinking about. You know, they're thinking about their tax situation. You know, they're thinking about, you know, how in the world are they going to ever retire? Um, they're thinking about leaving a legacy. So some of the things that a small business self-employed think about is right in the wheelhouse of what we do on the client services and the product side. Also understand that, you know, the market has had a, a ferocious rally from the March lows, but that's not going to continue. Market volatility is here. When you have, let's kind of call the March lows a heart attack, a massive heart attack. Well, if a person has a massive heart attack, they don't fully recover. They're not jogging or they're not running a marathon a couple months later. Same thing with the market here. Once we've introduced that type of volatility, it will be here to stay. and You don't have to predict the market. No one really can. You shouldn't be out there trying to do that. What you should be out there is opening conversations based on the factors of do we trust the stock market? Do we trust Wall, uh, Wall Street? Because if we don't, which most people don't, if you look at the surveys, then we have alternative plans that can be supplements to what they're already doing or foundations that take away some of those risks and hedge some of those risks. If you are not a financial professional and you're out there talking about products, you don't need to be very detailed. You know, the IUL itself is a, is a, is a financial vehicle that provides financial flexibility, 
growth potential, downside protection, and income tax advantages. I can have you talk to somebody about this free, no cost, no obligation. You can have a free book. You know, all of these things, we're not selling product. We're leading in conversation. And if you're an inviter, don't get tongue-tied. Just know some basic facts about a product like this, four points, and that's all. Don't hesitate. Don't pause. Continue the conversation. The reason I'm talking to you about this is we have free client services right now. And when you're talking to self-employed, small businesses, it can be the easiest, hey, does your business have all the tax deductions it needs? And do you have all the retirement income that you're going to need? Probably the answer to both of these is no. They may lie and tell you yes, but that's okay. What we do is we help create a self-employed benefits package. Do you need help with that? The reason that we bring up tax deductions is, you know, some of our partners are qualified to go back through and review and, and find tax deductions. But what we're talking about is the ability to use the IRS code for up to $57,000 in tax deductions for the small business owner, sole proprietor, joint owners, no employees. So this is a way that they can save for retirement and get the additional tax deductions. And then if, as you're talking to people, once again, do you trust Wall Street? Do you trust the stock market? If they're within 10 years of retiring, you know, first of all, are you planning to retire? Are you worried about losing money in your accounts leading up to retirement? They definitely should. We've had three market crashes in the past 20 years, very big market crashes. It's not going to stop. The boom and bust uh, stock market cycles are here to stay. And has anyone ever talked to you about recession-proofing your accounts? If I could show you a way to guarantee no loss while also guaranteeing a 7% rate of return on your income bucket, there's some products that we have that will do that over a 7- to 10-year process. Guarantee them 7% to 10 or 7% over those 7- to 10 years on the benefit base if they're looking for guaranteed lifetime retirement income. And remember, you gain commitment. You gain commitment from the very early part of the conversation. Whether you're posting, whether you're interacting and conversating about partners or clients, you start to build action steps and commitment from the very first start. So know some of this verbiage. It will help you from being that dog that's chasing its tail around. Um, coaching calls. As you build your business, like I said, we talked about earlier, three to five people at a time you're really working with and devoting some time with it if they deserve it. You know, put some um, extra into their coaching calls, help accelerate their growth. Eventually, they're not going to need you. But in the beginning, that time investment that you're putting in can pay you, you know, definitely uh, decades of rewards for that. Now is a the time. There's still a lot of people distracted. There's still a lot of people angry. There's still a lot of people out there uh, that are not focused on really how to help themselves and their inner circle and their family. You have to, you know, starve all of those distractions. Don't get involved with all that. You have to feed your focus. You have something that can do great things for yourself, your family, your inner circle, the people that you invite into your life, but also the charitable contributions that you want to get behind that could potentially help change, you know, a lot of people's lives. So don't leave your future up to chance. This is for you guys. This is for your partners coming in. This is not something where we – it's like a half-baked kind of commitment coming in. We're looking for uh, ultra commitment because that's what we're given from our side as well. Guys, that is all that we've got for today. If you guys need anything, by all means, don't sit there and wonder about, you know, a question about why something's not working, about how you should be doing something. You know, we've been doing this for a number of years now. We definitely know what doesn't work from starting this business. And from the last 24 plus months, we're starting to understand what does work. So don't just feel like you're on a desert island by yourself. Raise your hand and, you know, make sure that you understand you've got people that are more than willing to help you. Thank you so much, Mike. That was an incredible training. Um, let me go ahead and stop the recording, and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, thank you so much.